Johnson. It is Hutchins who are trying to get it out. A handball goes close to the line and it'll be another... Oh, he's been deemed to that one on purpose. Well, and that kick will go to James Gillow, the little fella. Uh, yeah, Bit well, stiff the there, guy. Yeah, it was a hard call, but... Uh, under he, extreme pressure. Yeah, and uh, that's a tough one there, but they keep, uh, they have the composure as they look to line it up and attack again. There's not much scoring going on. It's a bit of a seesaw here as we see Will Hay claim, but not given the mark. He clears it to the centre of the ground. There's Bastic. He swings and turns. He's been a good player today right there on the forward line. Down to the danger spot. That's the captain, Murford Cohen. He's playing a game of soccer with himself here. Taps it onto the event. He's trying to get Henry Johnson. But he gets it himself into Harry Bryant. He swings around Harry Bryant. He's been a workhorse too. Ali Far Ollie Farrell with composure. The grade nine shoots. Kicks the goal. Well needed. The junior Sandy Blay player. And he's really earning his medal. He's uh, doing a great job. I think he was a state under 15 player last year, Ollie Farrell. He was a big full forward there. And he's doing a great job. We'll be looking to see how he goes in the future as a player. He's a good little player. Yeah, he certainly is. And uh, you called it beautifully there. And that has brought Hutchins back to within three points or half a kick. And they are certainly going very, very nice in what has been the scoring in. Terrific work by him. He might be young in stature, but he's really standing up in this big grand final. It's moments like that that uh, certainly come at the moment come off the man. I think I could hear his dad Simon Farad there yelling out there He's, uh, he loves his footy and of course everybody does here, the teams, their parents their families and of course their school buddies are all out here for the grand final 2015 as we see Curtis Murphy work the ball down towards his teammate in Adam Linford Adam Linford goes back, he starts to size up, a bit of composure here as he kicks to their advantage, although it's the pack. Over the back there, trying to claim the mark is Sam Lee, but he can't quite, you can't take marks from the back. Uh, Matthew Allen, he's uh, closely checked there. Now, look, could be over the shoulder, but... Uh, I think the umpire was slightly blindsided to our fantastic position. Might have been a little bit too high. 50-50, and he's decided to ball that one up as the ruckman uh, try and get that out. It was uh, Johnston who raised raised Ooh. very highly. And there is the aerialist Callum Walker goes up, and he's got that one, I think, on the hooter. But it has been deemed to be uh, taken a little bit too high, as we see on replay. Yes, front on is where the umpire has seen that. Didn't have his eyes transfixed on the ball that was coming in over his shoulder. And it is Callum Walker, who's got the single already, going to go back and try and be the first multiple goal kicker for the St Pat's Football Club. As he lines up here on the top of the goal square, Liam Johnson's given that one up. Liam Johnson, I'll tell you what, he was a little bit unlucky there, but, gee, that was courageous work by, by Callum Walker. He had eyes only, as you said, for the ball. And, of course, that cor courage was rewarded. And, of course, it was only three points there. Now, uh, they, it's nine points of difference. It's still up for grabs this game as uh, 14 and a half minutes into the third quarter here at St. Patrick's. Yeah, Yeah, very entertaining game, as we see on replay. Uh, he only had it from 10 metres out. You can see the despondent Hutchins player on the mark didn't even raise the old Dukes. It was a foregone conclusion as far as he was concerned and it went over the top of his head and threw for the six points as the Ruckman face off again. It was Nicholson who arose the tallest for St Pats. Got the tap out to advantage but roving that one is Jakey Morgan as he sprints towards the goal, getting it down to that quickly attack. There's been a whistle on players. Campbell Fraser has been infringed upon by Murphy Cohen and he will relieve and as he spreads that ball out wide to Loon. Loon now looking for further afield. It is a low worm burner. In fact, he almost stubbed the toe, replaced the divot as Harry Bryant chips in. Bryant goes down towards the goal and it doesn't quite make the distance. And yet again, St. Pat's uh, relieve the pressure. It is now Shegog who takes it. He has one bounce, then kicks the long drop punt out towards the leading Smith. Smith. It is knocked away from him, but they are good enough to show a clean pair of heels. It backs towards Murphy. He couldn't take the ball, and he applies the pressure. There it is now with Linford. Linford picks up that ball, goes in wide, but it is Hutchins standing tall. Dendwang overruns that one, but going back in to help out is Britain through a chain of the handballs, but all these handballs are under extreme pressure. There hasn't been a good offensive handball yet. It is because, as you can see, every time the ball has gone into hand, 
it is claimed by an opposition. And there is just a prime example of that as it just goes back towards Kearney, comes out towards the back. Now an opportunity for Hutchins as they drive that ball towards the big man up there. Couldn't quite take the mark, Murford Cohen, because he had two defenders to beat. Now back in towards the centre of play. It is some pats. Get that arm across. It is belted back, and a very late whistle has been deemed to be that arm across, I think, has been paid a free kick to Hutchins' yeah, guy. and that'll be Ferguson who will take the kick Come there. On, Good man. job by him. Quickly moves it on. Great pass. Oh, gee, wow. Couldn't quite take the mark, but uh, makes up for it there, Spalding. As he kicks towards the arms of uh, uh, Alec Bastic. Alec Bastic, he's a goal kicker. He's a little bit too far out. Henry, ben Johnson's there, but he can't. He's decided to go back and um, go between, go and have a big kick. Jeez, that'll be a big kick from there. Yeah, I don't think he could make it uh, from there. He's far too far out as Bastic goes towards a congested 10-metre square. And it's an easy one to mop up for the defensive area there as Brown takes claim of the ball he boots it out wide Jake Morgan is running freely but he now there have got time to get the numbers now as some pats are working their way forward it is Hutchins through another chain of handballs the old give and go it is just a quick kick over that left shoulder without really looking and it's not the greatest kick for a forward to be underneath it's quite easy to defend when those balls come in quickly and it has gone in dispute and it'll be a ball up it is in the Hutchins uh, attacking zone here and uh, they would like another goal as they are nine points behind. Most definitely, I'll tell you what. Uh, and again, uh, Johnson wins the tap. He dribbles the ball, Goldwood's there, and it goes through for a minor score there. Johnson's doing a great job in the ruck for, uh, for Hutchins, but they, they're just not quite uh, just winning it out of the middle or winning it at the stoppages enough. But, uh, oh, gee, that was a good mark there by Dominic Shegok. He likes to play on. Almost loses control. Bounces twice. They're ugly bounces, but I tell you that he's moved the ball well. He's created a lot of space there. And uh, off the ground, that looks like it might be Liam Johnson. He's got a bit of pace there as he pushes the ball forward. I'm wrong. It was Charlie Britton. And in goes Johnson. And it looks like he might get in the back there. Ben Johnson is in the back. No, the umpire says give it to me and he'll ball it up here. Almost in the centre of the ground there. Up it goes. Looks like one player down. Could be Britton. The ball comes out. Number 11. That's Oliver Smith. He clears the ball. Kicks it down towards the half forward line. Gee, wow. He's kicked for space there. And we see who we got. He didn't have the ball there. That's Spiros Douglas. He's done a great job in the back line there. As we see the uh, James Gillow give a nice little handball to his teammate in. I didn't quite catch that Stevie play. Stevie Hudson. Oh. And Hudson. We know. Hudson's a very famous name for kicking goals and Stevie Hudson has uh, stood up tall and he has kicked his second and that was a very nice offensive handball to the advantage and as I called a few minutes ago guy all the handballs were just to get themselves out of danger but that was a very creative one out to the running player in Hudson who had the momentum going forward got the big left pendulum as he planted his right uh, foot into the ground, swung through the ball and has kicked it through for his second goal. But more importantly, he has Gibson Pats a little bit of breathing space here in the third quarter. Nice little handball by James Gillow to set up that goal as he runs off the ground and swaps with Samuel Samuel Stowe. OK, Hutchins will need to get this one back. We don't want, they don't want uh, St. Pats getting their sense here. Oh, Harry Bryan again trying to get the ball out. He's in a lot of trouble, but he got it out. So it's play on there. Uh, number 18 there, Dylan Johns can't, he can't correct it. Oh, it's come across to Alec Bastic. He's starting to look dangerous down there on the four line. Henry Johnson goes for the fly. I'd say almost Hudson's best player today. He's been playing all over the ground. He looks to move it on quickly. Kicks down towards his, his captain. And the ball's clear there. Tries to create space for Patrick Ball. Oh, I wouldn't be giving it, giving it to him, young Patrick there. You're only a little fella. He reminds me, that's what... Uh Back in the day when I had colour in my hair, guy, I was running around, I'd give a bit of chirp, but I'd always make sure that I gave the chirp when I was standing next to a big <laughs> yes. unit to come in and help me as uh, the ball comes back out. And that was Campbell Fraser, who's done a pretty good job down there. In fact, Murphy Cohen, who we know has been good and kicked a couple of goals, but he's run off well. And I think that's what he's got to do. Every opportunity he gets his hands on the ball, he's got to make the big man run and uh, take him out from his comfort zone, which is deep in the forward line as it is a boundary throw in here. What a colourful day it is today. There's a lot of old scholars, obviously, because we started seeing a lot of St Pat's and uh, Hutchins ties and uh, jumpers and blazers here for what is the 2015 Sardis Grand Final. 
as Hutchins now go forward. It comes out towards Ball. And Ball is very swift, just taking his time on this particular occasion. He goes the shorter kick, and it wasn't to any great advantage to his teammates as it comes out towards Casey. Casey gets it on towards Murphitt. He has beset on by the defensive area there, and it's a nice mark taken. Very, very low and a little bit of cramp because, Guy, it has been played at a very hectic pace. Oh, it most definitely has, Hoppy, and uh, he has cramped up badly, that boy. That's uh, Luke Tucker. He'll need to have a Gatorade or a Powerade or something like that to get the uh, magnesium back into him as the ball comes down towards the advantage of St. Patrick's there. Campbell Walker looking to move it on. A handball there, but in the way there is Will Hay, but uh, he slips over, so Oliver Smith takes the advantage there. Nice little kick there to Oliver Nicholson. He moves them all forward, and there, straight into the arms of Dylan Jones. Dylan Jones, he's in range. And well, we know he can kick a goal, guy. He's already got one to his name already. And uh, he's going to go back now and have a deliberate shot on goal as yet again it was kicked into that open space in the danger area. And uh, now here's an opportunity for some patch to extend their lead. As he lines up, runs in, nice kick off the boot and straight through the middle. That'll move him on to 62, St. Pats. 